Hey, it's Mike with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Tuesday. It's April 20th. This will be our chart lesson for today, and we had a uh, nice downtrend today. There's actually two relatively equal legs down, and then we just kind of went sideways after that. You, you really just had to play these shorter-term trends in here once we got the break outside. But you can clearly see we had the first leg down, then we corrected back. And then uh, we started this second leg down, and you can see it was almost a perfect measure. I mean, we went a couple of points lower than that, actually a few points lower than that, but that would have given you a nice target. And we bounced from there, came back and tested it. Uh, actually, we had a break of the downtrend channel. We didn't quite get a new low there. It was close. Uh, I think we, I think this low is 41.1075, and I think this one is. 41.10.50. So we, we missed it by a, a tick or so there, uh, but it's close enough. Um, we really never rallied out of there. We bounced out of there, but we really are just kind of going sideways here. You can clearly see prices above and below the EMA and the EMA kind of working sideways. You would still have a downward bias here. There weren't many trades after lunchtime again. I just didn't see anything in here I really liked that was worth risking. Uh, the overall bias was mostly down today. There's a couple of buys in here based on the shorter term stuff. Not many, but uh, it looked like early. You can see here's the overnight high. Here's the overnight low. And we're just going sideways in that. So there was a good chance that it looked like we may have a range day. But if if we started trading lower, then you would want to look for this measured move, which is exactly what we pretty much got. Um, there is a two-tiered blue channel here. I don't think it really helps you. Prices never come back to it. You just about have to trade the shorter term trends inside the uh, larger trend here. So hopefully that makes sense. We'll we'll uh, zoom in here in a minute and talk about them. So uh, let's do that now. Okay, this first trade here, there's a couple of green ones here early that set up right at this first one set up right at seven o'clock. And we were, we were at a fairly strong trend down. We had a break in new low and then two legs up. So this is a second entry short, pretty, pretty good trade, nice signal bar. It's a little bit congestive, but it is a second entry short. So, uh, and it does set up pretty nicely. So you may take this trade. I marked it green, but it's real close. You could argue for it to be red. Um, but because of all that congestion and the fact that it's just slightly above the EMA, but that's the first time we've been above that EMA since we really didn't close above it since way before 2 a.m. my time. So, so you would expect prices to maybe uh, at least get a scalp out of that, maybe even run down and test these lows again. And it would have been an easy scalp. Uh, you wouldn't have got a whole lot of uh, points on a run or anything there. But um, I like that trade. I marked it green, though, just because of the congestion. But we really had this congestion already, and so you could treat that like a failed breakout as well. But generally, you'll want to wait on a lower high. You actually get a lower high here, but this thing should have taken on off. And the fact that it comes back and you got congestion there again, I don't think you want to go short back into that EMA again. So just kind of sit tight. And then you get uh, a higher low here on a second entry long. Notice that's a new high, first entry, pullback. So there's second entry. Uh, if this wasn't right into the highs, I would say I'd probably make this one blue because this is probably going to trap people. But it, it this is, looks a little congestive. It's close to the highs. Um, you really don't have this trend line confirmed, even though it does look like a spike in channel setting up. It's not confirmed. Doesn't get confirmed till this touch here. So uh, this one's both of these are a little aggressive. This one's this one is the better trade. Uh, like I said, it's close to you could almost mark this one uh, red, but I did make this one uh, green. I just think it's a little aggressive for the reasons I talked. But it's probably going to act as a short trap, and it's probably going to. And you can see how it rockets up there real quick before it corrects again. And that's because all these shorts have to exit when it turns higher there. And you, and you can ex kind of expect that happening. Notice that most of them probably gave this high the line in the sand. It's kind of a double top across there. And that's when it kind of rockets up. You can see really, though, once it broke higher, this closes on its high, opens on it low, and keep going. So that's. 
that's a trap. That's a sheer sign of a trap. And uh, everybody exiting, and, and that's what happened there. So uh, once you started higher here, you would you would probably look for a measured leg at a minimum. There's leg one. So that's what I would be looking for at a minimum. Uh, we couldn't quite get up there on this move because you've run into this upper side of the channel here. And this could it could be that this is a little bit steeper here. It could be more like that right there. It fits either way. Um, so it's just kind of hard to say. Um, personally, I, to me, I believe it's like this. And you get a overshoot, and it's not long before you're going the other direction. Because we never make a new uh, new high after we never get a break in a new high here, and that's a fairly strong trend up. But at this point, this is still looking rangy to a possible another leg down. And you can see I I actually had this on here when I suggesting this same thing during the uh, mid morning chart update that I posted to the website. So if you read that, you'd have seen that comment that we could get another leg down, but you have to respect this trend, this uh, range until we figure out more. And you really probably would not have had the two tier down channel yet because you just don't have enough price action to confirm it really. I mean, you can see if you'd drawn it right here, you get those three touches and you can clearly see the midline coming into play. So you might have had it by now, but you know, I was still looking at the sideways stuff. It wasn't until we broke lower right in here that I really started thinking, hey, it looks like we're going to get this next leg down. And then I started looking for a bigger pattern. So that's kind of how I played it. Um, but anyway, you got the higher low there. You work up and then you're working back here. And somebody asked about this trade right here. Somebody uh, went short or long right there. Um, I can't remember what they, how, how they characterize that as a, I want to say they character, maybe it was a second entry long on their chart or actually they went long right here. It, it would, there is a second entry long right there. Notice the new high and you pull back and there's a first entry then you pull back again and there's a second entry, but look where it's happening at. Uh, it's also congestion. You got one, two, three, four bars stacked up side by side. At least two of them have no bodies or a very small body. That's congestion. It's in the, it is off the EMA, but by the time that sets up, it's, you can clearly see this trend line and the trend channel line on the other side. Um, I'd wait for something better here. Notice, notice that you do get a close outside, pull back to the trend line. It's also a, retest of that EMA and then you get this nice bullish bar and if you go long right there off to the races and you catch a runner on this one too this was a nice trade right here and you got enough room there to to really catch maybe a six to seven points there on a runner so that was a nice trade and if you do catch a runner on one like this an obvious place to exit is up here at the trend channel line but it you may not have been quite sure where that was. So at the very least, just move your stop, your safety stop up and put it one tick below each bar as it closes. And you would have got off out right here when it broke lower. That would have been a good, I mean, you would have got most of that move by doing that. So we pull back. There's another higher low. This is kind of a repeat pattern of this right here. And this one didn't work. So I don't think you want to go long there. It looks like that one would have worked. There is maybe uh actually it's actually it looks like it's very similar to this one but you've got a much higher low here you don't have a higher low but when you come to this one you got a higher low again so it's kind of a repeat pattern of this one down here although all three of them look alike but this one kind of throws it right here uh even though it looks similar but if you'd have taken this as a repeat of this uh setup down here it would have worked. Uh, I'm pretty sure it would have worked. I didn't mark it. Um, I didn't really like it because it sets up because you can see it set up similar to this one too. And uh, you notice it wasn't long before it acted like that one before it was over. So um, if you draw your little channel here, 
and it ends up coming back. It, it doesn't quite make a new low and, and we end up just going sideways here. And I don't see any entries in there that I like. You, you got to be careful going short here yet. Uh, even though there's not really a good short setup either, this one's tempting and it would have worked, but you're still in the midst of this uptrend at this point. So I don't think you want to go short right there. And then we're just too congestive over here. Um, and you just don't get, I mean, it's a long time to have to wait there for not a whole lot of opportunities in it. So, and once we broke lower here, just look for a measured move. I've measured, made that measured move. You can see it and just make that measured move, drag it down and notice that's pretty much um exactly what we got there we got a few ticks more but notice the closes notice that was a nice little target right there unfortunately you probably don't catch this you might have gone short right there but the fact that we were going sideways in this upper half i just i don't really like it there is a triple test there fairly bearish bar so i mean if you took that one i wouldn't i wouldn't give you a hard time about it but i just think it's too early to be short because you're st you're really short right into that trend trend line too. Uh, you can see it losing steam here, not getting back, but we had the overshoot. That's another thing that tells you you're probably going to get a break soon. So that just that scares me away from that trade. Uh, we did close outside here, and we're trying to make a new high, so it could have broke. It could have trapped you in and gone higher. That's why I don't like that one. And then you get two legs down, and then you're just sideways in this lower lower part. But notice we're just kind of losing steam here each time. Uh, I, I traded this one just simply because we're in this lower range now. And you made a high here. This one's a little lower than that one. But you made this high and then you test it once. You test it twice. There is a first, second entry short. So I like going short there. I actually marked this one as a possibility. Notice the high, first entry, second entry. Uh, it's a double top, so you can count it as a new high. It does, basically doesn't it doesn't really tick higher than that because it's a double top. You can count it as a new high. So first entry, second entry, a nice bullish bar, and it's a triple test. But we're kind of trending down here, so I'm not crazy about that entry. And you can see it took it a little work, and it, you know it would have scared you to death probably because it trades back down in here quite a bit before it finally pushes higher. Uh, but then you get your two legs up, and this actually confirms the trend line right here, uh, but that's not really why I like this trade. It's really just a triple test and a double top with a slightly lower high with a bearish bar, and it's a second entry short. Now, make sure you understand this. Second entries, we don't look for second entries in ranges like this. They don't. It doesn't mean a whole lot because you'll get chopped to pieces really trying to trade second entries or failures. So you have to have another reason to enter. But if you've got other reasons to enter and it's also a second entry, then, yeah, that gives it a little more credence. But just be careful with second entries in these kind of tight ranges because you'll get chopped all to pieces. So just keep that in mind. Uh, there's a lower high here and you could have considered, but it's just such a big bar. You know, it's probably plus it's probably going to act like a failed breakout. So I think you're better off to wait and see if you get a failed breakout and maybe it fails and you get a sec, uh, failed second entry long. And that's exactly what happens. Again, this is a double top first entry, second entry, and it fails. Look at that bearish bar. You got to go short here at the lows, but my guess is you're going to at least get another move down similar to, to uh, this last leg or maybe even both these legs. So at a minimum measure it like this. And you can see that's a perfect measured move there. And then it bounces. But notice it makes a new low. First entry short, runs on up. Second entry short, right at the key, uh, that trend line coming down, right at the EMA, big bearish bar. It actually breaks higher first and turns down. You might have considered an engulfing bar there, but you got to be real careful with those. So, you know, at the very least, just let it close. Drop your sale order right there. Uh, a sell stop order right one tick below that and then it ticks lower and off it's going and now all the people that were trying to get long in here realize oops we're going lower and off it goes that that is probably the trade of the day because you'll get a runner on this one and you can ride this one all the way down there there's another thing here too there's a first entry 
uh, I'm sorry, first entry and then second entry. So that's a failed second entry long right there, but it's not a true one the way we like to see them. And there's also a hidden second entry in there. Notice the low, we go up, we trade back down, you turn up. So there's a hidden second entry. Um, it is a failed second entry long. Uh, it's right off a possible key entry point. We haven't reached the low on the green one yet, if it's, if it's accurate. Um, there's some reasons to like that trade right there. It's not quite back to the EMA though, but that's because this other trend line, although it's not really confirmed until here, then you just really don't, there's no entries on down here. So you might've considered that one. I think it's a little aggressive. I, I'll put a green one there. We run on down and then finally we get a break here, but that's the first break of that yellow one. So we're going to try to make a new low and then you got to also take into cook. Uh, account that this there may be the bigger blue channel here so uh, but anyway you get two legs up you get a lower high here but you're in congestion and then finally you break out of that pull back and test it and this is a failed second entry long and there's a bigger two-legged correction right there that tells you hey we may be going lower and so you might also measure this leg and look for this to be the center of the pattern. And lo and behold, there you go. There's your measure move down. Looks like we missed that one slightly, but not by much. And so this was, again, you get a runner right here. This is a nice run down. Then you come back and you get a first entry, second entry right off that key entry point, right at the EMA, fairly bearish bar, and it's also a second entry short. So you got a failed second entry long, a second entry short. Technically, it's technically you could argue the second entry short was here because it broke higher here first and turned down, but that's still all of one move. So I wouldn't be afraid to treat that like a second entry either. So it's a failed second entry long, a second entry short, fairly bearish bar. It's right off a key entry point, right off the EMA. It's also some resistance across there. It's like a pull back to test that little area. Uh, I like that one. It takes it a minute, but off it goes, boom. And we run on down and we just about get that measured move and bounce out of there. Uh, I don't think you want to be trying to take catch a low or long trade uh, off some lows on a strong downtrend like this. There is a failed second entry short here, but it's not an engulfing bar. So you have to use this as your signal bar. And that's just way too far away from the EMA. Um, it would have worked, but I just don't think it's worth entering up there. And then you just start kind of working sideways, but notice that support across there. You make a new high first entry, second entry, uh, so that's a second entry long right there at the EMA. It's a triple test of that level. I don't have a support line across there, but it's there. Right there. And you got plenty of room back to the top if it does turn out to be a little range, which it doesn't. You're just finding support here. Sometimes people miss that. I mean, this looks range like, but notice how you're making higher highs each time. And here you're just going flat. So what you're really running into here is strong support, not necessarily a range. And you'll see that just the opposite too, where um, there was somebody that another trade here somewhere. Um, I can't remember where it was, but anyway, somebody asked me about a trade and it was something similar to this, right? This here, I think it was, so I think it was on the other side. They were finding strong resistance. Uh, I think it was this trade here um, that I talked about earlier. Somewhere in there. I, I'm sorry. I, I'm not going to try to go back and find it because I can't remember where it was. And we're already 20 minutes into this. But that turns out to be another nice move. And again, you get a runner on that. A lot of runners today. Uh, not a lot of trades, but the ones there are are really good. There's a failed second entry long there, but it's above the EMA. It's still inside the trend line. No way you can go short there. Uh, no long set up there. Keeps on down. You get a close. Uh, don't quite get a new low. But notice you had a, a double bottom. So that's a new count right there. So first entry 
and then when it turns down right here, when it breaks below this bar right here, that's another second entry short, big bearish bar. That's a great place to go short. You don't get much more in a scalp out of that one, unfortunately. It comes back, and there's a double test here. But look at the size of that signal bar. That bar alone is... Well, why is it not giving me my... Now all of a sudden some of my stuff is missing. Um, I don't know how big that bar is. You can kind of do the math. The high is 41.24.75 and the low is 41.20. So that's four points in a tick. So that's a pretty big bar on for the current volatility. So, uh, And you got to go short right at these lows. I just don't think it's worth. It would have worked, but I don't like that trade. It's you know, it's a good chance it breaks lower, comes back, and stops you out. And on a big bar like that, you're going to get hammered. So, and, and I didn't see anything else I liked after that. There's no entries really to the upside here. There's a failed second entry short right here. But we don't quite have a new low in after the break of this. So we're probably going to continue to push down. Uh, but this is just more sideways action. And we're, we're working up here. And again, there's a failed second entry short that you might go long, but look, I'm, again, the signal bar is just so big and you got to go long at the high, high of the, what looks like a trend channel because you could get that trend by the end. Uh, it works on up. There is a second entry long here, but too far away from the EMA. Then you get a failure. I'm sorry if that was loud there. I bumped my microphone, but you got a new high, first entry, second entry, but you got to go short right into the EMA. Uh, a little bit of support there. Turns out to be a great trade, but you would expect prices to try to possibly make a new high. So again, I just don't see a way to enter that. Um, just a first entry there. There is a hidden second entry there, and that's a pretty strong move down. But if you draw your little trend channel up, I just don't think you want to risk that trade. Now there is a second entry long here. Uh, at a basically a double bottom, but this trend has been down. This is one that you could argue if you wanted to be super aggressive with that second entry, that reversal bar that far away from the EMA, we're probably coming back. Uh, but at two o'clock, I wouldn't risk that trade. I'll put it on there as green, but I just I wouldn't risk that trade. Uh, I think it's way too risky. And by the time you get a higher low, you're right back. You've already been back to the EMA and you're in the two o'clock hour. So not something I'd want to take a risk on, to be honest with you. So there it is. Um, quite a few trades. Uh, for all that price movement, you would you had to be patient this morning. It's been that. It seems like, you know, usually the mornings are the best part of trading. And it's been late morning lately. And then nothing hardly in the afternoon. So it's really kind of like from 9 o'clock to lunchtime has been our prime trading. And so, you know, when the market starts to do things, it, it tends to do them consistently for a little while. And then all of a sudden it'll throw you off. You'll come in one day and you'll expect. So don't let it, never let the market lull you to sleep because it'll make you, it'll give you expectations by doing something consistently just like we were trending up forever there consistently. So you could almost count on as long as you stayed with the uptrend, you couldn't hardly mess up. But now we're starting to trend down. We were overdue for a correction. You can see the last couple of days we've been trending down. So I'm not ready to say we're going to continue to trend down, but we could. Uh, I've shown you the, the daily chart a few times. Here's our daily chart, and you can see we're way up here and over. So we haven't broken through the the brown line yet, but generally, once you break above this purple line, this is our. Um, people always ask me what this is, so I'll just explain it. This is our envelope strategy. It's a custom indicator that we have that we use to kind of show us where you could expect the turns. And generally, once you get above that purple, you're an oversold territory and you can see we we shot above it right here back on this was on um, the 5th of april and we've been above it and here's these last couple of days where we've corrected back down so generally it'll come back to at least the mid midline which is this center or the center line 
So we could correct all the way back to there. Doesn't mean we can't push up and make one more push up. But if we push through that brown, I'd be looking for uh, maybe a correction. But you can see we did that here. But it, we're really, there's a two-legged correction there that could be the center of a, a pattern. And if you consider that, maybe starting from here to that two-legged pattern, Actually, I did that backwards. It should be there. And then we started back up right there. And you can see we already got that measured move. But now let's measure from all the way at the bottom. And we've already got that one. So it just leads me to, but there's some other possibilities in here, though. So don't get me wrong. Um, we might actually have measured leg here because you got a you've actually got even a two-legged correction in here that's kind of a hidden second entry so let's just assume that that's it that leaves us a little more room to go uh, so there's a couple of different ways I already showed you the one I tr where I kept calling for the 4111 high or whatever I was measuring that leg like so and that's where I was getting that 4111 and you can see we even blew through that one and uh, again I got them backwards we even blew right through that one you can see we found resistance there, but we pushed them up. So we're, we're way overdone for a correction, and, and we're starting to get one, but I, I just think we're going to have a bigger correction yet. So but anyway, this is getting close to 30 minutes. I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, we'll be back again to do it tomorrow. I'm done for today. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.